Queen and I'm back with another video and today I'm going to review <coughs> today I'm going to review um do a movie review because I haven't done one in a while and today I'm going to review the 2017 of Beauty and the Beast. Now I do have two reviews up of the of the beauty of the 1991 Beauty and the Beast and if you wish to see them I'll link those in the description box down below. I'm gonna get started in my review. So this story involves Belle, a beautiful woman who's played by Emma Watson who goes to look for her father after she notice he goes that he goes missing. Her father, played by Kevin Klein, who goes missing, and she goes and finds him, and she ends up finding him at this beast cat beast who put voiced by Dan Stevens, Stevens Castle, and um, she learns that he is the pris his prisoner for stealing a rose. Rose. So Belle offers to take her father's place. Um, place in. Her father's place, yeah. She offers to take her father's place as prisoner, and then during the time she's there, she starts to get to know him and spend and sees him as a kind person instead of a hideous beast. Okay, so to start off, I love this new Beauty and the Beast. It was amazing. It was remind. It was like the '91 version, but except it was a. I felt like it was a little bit better because it had like some changes to it, and I really, really liked it. And, um, I do, and again, I do have two reviews up of the original, of the 91 version of Beauty and Beast, and I'll link those in the description box down below. I loved all the characters, I loved all the songs, I loved the story, and I loved everything about it. I thought it was just amazing how they did it up. It was pretty long, but I really like how they changed it up a little bit. Next, I'm going to talk about the director. This was directed by Bill Condon, and Bill Condon I'm not really familiar with with him and anything besides the Dream Girls, and that's the only film I know that he directed. Next I'm going to talk about the characters. Now a lot of you guys know, if you watch my channel, you know that Belle is my favorite Disney princess and my just of all time, and also she's my favorite character from Beauty and the Beast. I really like Belle because I like how this Belle's changed up a little bit, like she's changed and she's an inventor, unlike her father, who was the inventor in the original version. This time, Belle's an inventor, and I like how she's more independent and, like, really smart, loves to read, and is very, very creative when it comes to ideas. I really like that about her. And I like how you get a little bit of a backstory, like, you get a story of what happened to her mom and why she only has her dad and stuff like that. I really like that. And she's played by Emma Watson, and Emma Watson, I recognize her from Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, and she plays Hermione Granger, and Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, and she also plays Hermione Granger. Here again, Harry Potter and the Prisoner as Command, she also plays Hermione Granger, and then Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, who, and she also plays Hermione Granger. And I also recognize her from the Tale of Despero, which I've seen before, and she does the voice of Princess P. Next, I'm going to talk about the Beast. One thing I like about the Beast is I like how he also has a backstory as well. Like, you get an idea of what happened to his parents and why he became what he was before he became a Beast. And I like how it shows, like, in person, like, the story of how he became a Beast instead of in stained glass form, like in the, the 91 version. Now, don't get me wrong, I do like the stained glass form of Beauty and the Beast. But I think this one's pretty cool, too, like, and then you get, like, a story of, like, how he became cruel and selfish, and you'll, and I like how he learns a valuable lesson after being turned into a beast about seeing others for whom, for what they are on the inside rather than the outside, right, and I like how he becomes kind and caring throughout the course. And he is played by Dan Stevens, and Dan Stevens, I recognize him from The Night at the Museum and The Secret of the Tomb. Next, I'm going to talk about Gaston. I like this Gaston, um, even though he still is kind of, like, full of himself and shallow, though, and rude. I kind of like this Gaston because I think he's a little bit nicer than the original Gaston. Like, even though he's Gaston's kind of full of himself, and I don't like Gaston. No, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that I actually like Gaston. I just, um... I like how they changed up him a little bit. Like, he also has a little bit of a backstory. Like, he was a soldier at first. Sorry to, sorry if I get away for those who haven't seen it. And I like that um, he um, also, like, tries everything he can to get Belle and stuff. Like, But I like how they made him a bit more more crueler than the original 91 one version of Gaston. Like, he's a bit more crueler. 
or the new original guest on, and I thought that was pretty interesting how they changed him up as well. And he is played by Luke Evans, and Luke Evans, I recognize him from The Hobbit, The Unexpected Journey, and he plays Jairion. I don't know how to say that. Next, I'm going to talk about LeFou. I like how LeFou's changed up, too. Like, LeFou usually is the dim-witted sidekick, but this one, he's not as dim-witted as he, as he is in the 91 version. I like that he's, um... A bit more, he's a bit smarter, and he is like also like goes with Gaston's ideas instead of like like acts dumb and stuff like that. Like he's a lot smarter than the ninety one version of LeFou, and he's played by Josh Gad, and Josh Gad does the voice of Olaf in Frozen. Next, I'm going to talk about Maurice. I really like how they changed up Maurice too. Like instead of him being the inventor, I like how they made him the music box maker. Maker and Bell the Inventor. I thought that was a pretty cool change up and I like how that he you kinda get a backstory of him and what happened to his wife wife when his daughter was really little. Little and I think that's a pretty good idea that they gave a little backstory as well. And I like that he's um even I like that he's a very kind and caring father and very protective of his daughter and I really like that. And he's played by Kevin Klein, and Kevin Klein, I recognize him from The Hunchback of Notre Dame, and he does the voice of Phobos. Next, I'm going to talk about the um, object characters. I'm going to talk about Lumiere. I like this version of Lumiere. I think it's pretty cool. Like, if the original... Okay, like, he doesn't really look too much like a candelabra, like an original candelabra. He's got more of a human form of a candelabra, which I thought was pretty cool. Pretty cool. Like, um, in, the in the original Beauty and the Beast, he doesn't really look too much like a human, like his body and stuff like that when he's a candelabra. But in this version, he looks more like a candelabra, like a human with a can with like the human with like candles for hands and the hat for candle with a candle on his head. It's pretty cool. <laughs> And he is voiced by Ewan McGregor, and Ewan McGregor, I recognize him from Big Fish, and he plays younger Edward Bloom and Valiant, and he does the voice of Valiant. Next, I'm going to talk about Cogsworth. I really like Cogsworth. Worth, like, I like how he's really kind and gentle, and he's kind of a bit bossy, which I find really neat. And, like, he is, like, pretty much, like, the head of the household. Like, he keeps everything in order. Order and he gives orders to people. I think that's really cool that they made him a clock because he gives orders. And he's voiced by Ian McKellen. Ian McKellen, I recognize him from The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, and The Hobbit. And he bit the the ring. I forgot who he plays. And he's also in The Hobbit, The Unexpected Journey. And I forgot who he plays as well. Next, I'm going to talk about Madame Garderobe, and she is a wardrobe. I really like Madame Garderobe because I like how she's a op pretty opera singer. She has a beautiful opera voice, and she um, like dress takes care of Belle, helps her out, and makes sure she's okay. And I really like how she like treats her like a guest. And she's voiced by Audra McDonald. And Audra McDonald, I don't recognize her in anything but this movie. Next, I'm gonna talk about Kendenza. And he is a harpsichord, which is a type of piano. I like him because he is actually Madame Garderobe's husband. And they, um, like, sing and play music together. Like, she sings while he plays music. And I feel sad that they're kind of separated from each other. Like, I, she's in a bedroom while he's downstairs. Here, and they can't really move too much because they're both, like, big ob objects. <laughs> And he is played by, voiced by Stanley Tucci, and Danny Tucci, I do not know, know him in anything else but this movie. Next, I'm going to talk about Mrs. Potts. I really like Mrs. Potts because I think she's a very motherly character. Like, she cares for everyone, including her son, who's a teacup, and her um, friends, and although she takes care of, I really like that. She treats Belle as a guest as well. And she's voiced by Emma Thompson, and Emma Thompson, I recognize her from... The Harry Potter movies as Professor Sybil Trelawney, I don't know how to say that, and she's also in Tre Treasure Planet, and she's Captain Amelia, and she's also Nanny McPhee, 
and she voices plays Nanny McPhee. Next, I'm going to talk about her son, Chip. I really like Chip because I like how he's curious about everything, which is really cute. And I love that he's um, caring and also likes Belle. Like, he thinks of her, like, he thinks she's really, um, <laughs> like, he really likes her. She thinks of her kind of as a big sister, which is really cute. Cute, and I like how he treats her as a guest as well. And he's voiced by Nathan Mack, and Nathan Mack, I do not recognize him in anything else but this movie. Next, I'm going to talk about Plumette. I met, and she's a feather duster, and I really like Plumette because I like that she tricks um, Lumiere all the time and teases him and constantly gets him to chase her. Well, actually, their relationship's a bit different. Like, she doesn't, um, in the 91 version, she gets him to chase her a lot and teases him, but this time she doesn't tease him. Him. She's really devoted to him, and then she just loves him so much and wants to be with him. And she's voiced by Goo Embatha Ra, and Goo Embatha Ra, I'm not familiar with her in anything else but this movie. Next, I'm going to talk about the setting. This takes place in the 1770s of, Fran of France, and it's really cool. I like the outfits. I like the, um, the um, village. The village is amazing. I really like how they did the forest as well. The forest is great. And I also love the castle. The castle is just beautiful. It's wonderful. This old um, era of France is really great. I really like the way it looks. Looks, it's like amazing to see like how things looked like in those certain er times of eras, like the 17th century and stuff. It's pretty cool. Next, I'm going to talk about the songs. I really like the song Belle. It's one of my favorite songs in the movie. It's really, really great. I love how Emma Watson sounds when she sings this. And by the way, this is sung by Emma Watson and Luke Evans and like pretty much all the villagers. I really like this song. It's really beautiful and I like how the way it sounds. Next, I'm going to talk about How Does a Moment Last. And this one is sung by Kevin Klein, And I think it talks about like... Um, Belle and her mother, pretty much, like, I don't really remember because I haven't heard this song in a while, Belle and her mother, pretty much, like, uh, when he was younger and stuff like that, how he was with her, and then I'm going to talk about the song Belle Reprise, and this is also sung by Emma Watson, this one I've heard millions of times in the 91 version, I really like the song, it's really good, and you get, in this song, you get an idea of Belle and who she is. Next, I'm going to talk about Luke Gaston, and this was sung by Luke Evans, and this one was really changed up. I was super impressed by this one. It was extremely changed up because, like, it's... It's got, like, um, like a dance sequ... Um, a musical break and a dance sequence. It was awesome. I really like how they did this. I like how they changed up the lyrics as well. I, it was, they did a great job. And I think those are lyrics that were um, going to be added in the song, but, song before the song was finished, but the movie was made in the 91 version, but unfortunately I guess they didn't add it. Next I'm going to talk about Be Our Guest, and this is sung by Ewan McGregor, Emma Thompson, Gugu Mbatha Ra, and Ian McKellen. I really like this one because it's like the 91 version of it, and I like how, like, they're treating Belle as a guest in the song, and they care about her, and they try not to treat her like a prisoner. Next, I'm going to talk about Days in the Sun, and this is sung by Adam Mitchell, Stanley Tucci, um, Ewan McGregor, Gugu Mbatha-Ra, Emma Thompson, um, Audrey McDonald, Emma Watson, Ian McKellen, and Clive. And this one talks about, like, um, how, um, I forgot this one talks about it. I haven't really heard the song in a while. But, um, I really like how this, how they all sing it together. And it seems like a pretty good song. Like, it, I think it talks about, like, being in the castle and stuff like that. That I don't really remember because I only heard the song like once. I'm sorry. Next, I'm going to talk about Something There. And this is sung by Emma Watson and Dan Stevens. I like this song because it talks about, like, um, there's something more to, like, the beast than what he looks like on the outside. And I really, really like that. That, and um, they, I like how Belle and the beast, like, start to see each other for whom they really are instead of what they look like on the outside. 
Next, I'm going to talk about um, how does a moment last. I like this one because it talks about um, Emma Watson going back into. I talk. And this is something by Emma Watson. This is talk about how Belle goes back to in time to her childhood when she was a baby, and then she like learns like what happened to her mom, and you get an idea of what happened to her mom, and then she sees her ch old childhood home home and like what happened to her mom it's really sad next I'm going to talk about Evermore and this is sung by Dan Stevens Evermore I'm pretty sure talks about how the beast lets Belle go and he's like sad that he has to let her go but he feels like he did the right thing next I'm going to talk about the mob song I really hate this song it's too dark for me and it's depressing and it makes me so sad sad because it's really dark and this is sung by Luke Evans Oops, I forgot Beauty and the Beast. I skipped that one. I skipped Beauty and the Beast, and that one's sung by Emma Thompson, and I really like this one because it's beautiful. Emma Thompson, I feel like, sounds ex almost exactly like Angela Lansbury when she sings it. The Mob Song, I really... Okay, now back to the Mob Song. The Mob Song, I, so the mob song I really hate because it's too depressing. It talks about killing the beast, and it, every time I hear that song, I just can't want to like plug my ears. Next, I'm going to talk about the Beauty and the Beast finale, and this is sung by uh, Audrey McDonald and Emma Thompson. I really like this one because, like, it tells the story, it's how Beauty and the Beast is a tale as old as time, and, like, the it's, like, a beautiful song because it talks about how Beauty and the Beast, Belle and the Beast got together. Okay, so I would recommend, um, the new Beauty and the Beast 2017 to anyone who likes musicals, because this is such a great musical, and anybody who likes um, Beauty 91 version of Beauty and the Beast, because this is exactly like the 91 be version of Beauty and the Beast, only a little bit better. And I also would recommend it to anybody who likes the fairy tale of Beauty and the Beast. Okay, so that was my review on Beauty and the Beast 2017. I'm really sorry that this was so long, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in another video soon. Bye!